Whatever is painted truly possesses both the subjective sentiment, the poetry of nature, and the objective fact. George Ennis. It is this intersection of fact and feeling that is of interest to me in my work in general, and in particular with regard to Lennox Woods. The synthesis of knowledge and deep connection to subject and emotional content form the basis of my approach to painting the landscape. Lennox Woods is a vivid reminder of the southern hardwood forests, which were typical of floodplains throughout East Texas before the arrival of settlers. It stands as a living time capsule of the abundant, vibrant hardwood forest which covered much of the south. Large upland stands of pine and hardwood form a canopy over a diverse understory. The Con Bayou, one of the largest undammed watersheds in Texas, feeds numerous streams throughout the woods and creates a rich bottomland which includes rare and endangered flora. As the entry point for most settlers into Texas in the 19th century, including Davy Crockett and Sam Houston, this area would have been their first site of the abundance and natural bounties of Northeast Texas. Unlike many old growth forests or other national treasures, Lennox Woods is not unusual or extraordinary in the way we think of the redwoods in California or the Grand Canyon, for example. But what makes it truly special is that it represents what was once common and is now rare. Within the woods, one can step back in time and yet witness a living, functioning ecology, which is as vibrant and diverse as it was hundreds of years ago. I went to the woods because I wished to live deliberately, to front only the essential facts of life, and to see if I could not learn what it had to teach, and not, when I came to die, to discover that I had not lived. Henry David Thoreau when I first went to the woods, I tried to follow Thoreau's advice and to live deliberately, to approach the woods as an artist naturalist. I understood that this would mean becoming more familiar with my subject, understanding how the forest works as a living ecosystem, and noticing the smallest details, unwrapping its beauties layer by layer. This path has been well traveled by many of the 19th century artists who I admire and who have influenced my work. During the 19th century, it was common for artists to explore nature, not only for artistic motifs, but also to document the natural history of their subjects. The Hudson River School artists painted the grand views they saw in nature to embody the idealism and enthusiasm of a new nation, keen to establish its own artistic identity. Later in the 19th century, tonalist artists like Ennis sought to establish a more intimate footing with nature and to use aesthetic devices to make the viewer feel part of the painted scene. That synthesis of the natural world fact and the more intimate personal response, feeling, is what I seek in my work. My goal was to become more than simply a visitor to the woods, but rather a participant in the life of the forest. What that meant for me was to find a way to express in my work what I see in the woods, what I know about the woods, and what I feel about the woods. Nothing happens there that is of any importance, at least by the standards of the world. It is quiet, but not silent, and within that quiet is a constant hum of energy and life. You just have to look and listen. That's what I did at first, to the exclusion of everything else. It took a while to hear the sounds and actually see what was there. Slowly the woods started to reveal themselves to me. The season was changing from summer to fall, and every visit offered new ways to look at the woods and new color harmonies. Even the sound of the woods changed with the season. The muffled sounds of the summer woods gave way to the echo of birdsong through the bare trees. So I kept looking and listening. I don't mean casual looking. I mean intense, sustained, and repeated observation. I spent several months in Lennox Woods just looking before I began to draw and paint. As part of the observation process, I was also learning about the woods, using field guides to find out about the trees, the flora and fauna, the forest ecology. I've had the pleasure of walking through the woods with a number of scientific experts and drawing upon their knowledge and perspective about plants, trees, insects, and other subjects. Rather than looking at it simply as a motif to paint, looking from the outside in, I aspired to become part of the motif. 
The knowledge of how a thing is built induces an intimate sympathy, giving us constant pleasure. And the landscape painter must have as true a knowledge of the branch anatomy of a tree as a figure painter has of the anatomy of the human form. Rex Beacott Cole My forest journal is filled with notes about the things I observe, details about individual forms, as well as my personal reactions to them. I try to record as much as I can about each experience, the echo of birdsong through the woods, the cooler air beneath the canopy, the atmospheric quality of the filtered light reaching the forest floor. My favorite thing to do is simply to sit quietly, journal in hand, listening and looking and taking occasional notes. What I have found over the past two years as I explored the woods is there is a quiet but palpable energy in the forest. My observation is informed by the power of memory, which I use a great deal in my work. Memory distills and intensifies the information the senses receive. What is left goes on the canvas. So these paintings are the result of my time in the woods. Although they are a reflection of me, I hope they also act as a portal, taking the viewer to the woods and to their own experience of it. <laughs>